Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about the basics of an accelerometer. There are two main types of accelerometers. Those that track the acceleration due to gravity, where the accelerometer readings give the acceleration field in three axes. These sensors need to track motions only as fast as we say move our phone, and are mainly used for orientation, so it's measurements on the order of 1g with milliseconds of response time. Another application is impact detection. Freefall sensors in laptops need to dock drive before the laptop can hit the ground. Similarly, automotive accelerometers need to respond quickly with enough accuracy and precision to reliably tell the difference between a sudden stop and a collision. This means that these sensors require higher resolution and bandwidth than say an orientation accelerometer. With that said, the techniques for the construction and operating principles are the same. We are only going to focus on a simple one axis accelerometer, something closer to say a phone's accelerometer than an automotive one. Yeah. Let's start with the proof mass. The proof mass translates the acceleration to force. The larger the mass, the larger the force. We want this to be as large as possible without increasing the cost of the accelerometer. Next. We need to convert force into displacement by using a spring mass system. The same working principle as a spring scale. Except that we need to make sure that the spring mass system can rotate. With the spring mass system in place, we need to measure displacement. The most common method uses capacitance. To make the math simple, let's just look at small displacements. The difference between the accelerometer capacitance and its value at zero acceleration is proportional to the displacement, which is in turn proportional to the acceleration. We can measure the difference of the two capacitors using a transimpedance amplifier, where the negative feedback forces node 2 to virtual ground. This means that the current flowing in the feedback network is due to C-sense and c -rest. This translates into a voltage at V-out that is again proportional to the acceleration. This is all we need for a single axis accelerometer. But let's think about what sensitivity we can get out of a spring mass system. Cost limits us on the area of the plates, but we can minimize the distance between them as long as the device has room to move. We could also increase the capacitance by adding high dielectric films or patterning the plates. Increasing M and decreasing K is also an option, as long as we're careful. As we apply an acceleration that changes in frequency, our accelerometer responds at the same frequency. But for frequencies above its resonance, it no longer responds. This means that the requirement for response time We'll put a limit on these parameters, M and K. We also need to worry about noise. The first source of noise is due to the spring mass system. It's produced by random variations in the proof mass. This also gets worse with softer springs and bigger masses. We can also increase sensitivity through our electronics by decreasing the feedback capacitance or increasing the input voltage. This limits the dynamic range of the acceleration as the signal can't be more than the supply. This however only helps when the circuit noise is more dominant than the device's thermal noise, which is the noise due to the spring mass system. Another consideration for the circuit is of course its own noise. The first order the circuit is not sensitive to parasitic capacitance. However, any parasitic capacitance at the summing junction decreases the feedback attenuation beta. The feedback node sees any parasitic capacitance in parallel with the signal capacitance. This increases the circuit noise and reduces the bandwidth of the op amp, as higher gain means lower bandwidth. That's all for today. But please consider the following classes for more detail on accelerometers, gyroscopes, microphones, compasses, chemical sensors, and many other MEMS devices. Thanks for watching.